Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning here at West Freeway Church of Christ. Welcome to Family Day. What a great family day. It's so good to see so many visiting with us today, many who are our family members. Uh, but I got to meet Chris and Amanda who are not. You'll have to find Chris and Amanda. It's a big secret where they're sitting. It's a, it's, a, it's a scavenger hunt. They're very sweet people. And let them know how much you love them. I did have a couple of things that were, were brought to my attention. First, one of uh, Kenneth Garner's friends, Sean Miller, I did not know had lost a finger in an industrial accident. Well, that finger has been reattached and it's looking good so far. So thank God for that and your prayers. But another good friend of his, Joanne Dunn, lost her son last week. So please be keeping Joanne in prayer. Another little announcement is get your family together. First of all, we're going to eat after worship and have another little devotional after we eat. So we'll not have an evening service tonight. But before, while, while you're waiting to get into the line and after the line, Right over there is a beautiful place to have your photograph taken. A uh, sister has put together uh, a really nice backdrop, fall backdrop, with pumpkins and scarecrows and all kinds of good things and a nice place to sit. So be sure to get your photograph taken by friends and family before you leave today. What a blessing family is. Amen. We're thrilled that you're here with us. And whether or not you know it, you've got family right here. If you're one of God's children, so are we, and we want to be your brothers and sisters this morning. Let's all enter into worship. If it's convenient for you, would you stand as we sing? There is beyond the azure blue a God concealed from human sight. He tinted skies with heavenly hue. set men free and evermore with him could live. There is a God. There is a God. He is alive. He is alive. In him we live. And we survive. And we survive. From dust our please. Right now it's time for our little ones to come to the front. Coins for Christ and then uh, Brandon will have a devotional with them and we have a song to bring them down. So where are my kids this morning? Come on down. Booster, booster, be a booster. Don't be grouchy like a rooster. Booster, booster, be a booster, and boost our Bible school. Brandon. Good morning, boys and girls. How are y'all this morning? Was that Lily or was that Emmy? That was you, Lily? 
That was solid. I like that. Good job. Are y'all doing good? Good. I think y'all are doing good. You look good. That's half the battle, right? All right. How many of y'all like treasure? Yes. What's, what's, what, is tr what is treasure for you? What, what, what kind of treasure do you have? Money. Money. I tricked y'all, didn't I? <laughs> Toys. Toys. Ooh, that's a good one. Toys. Yeah, that's, yeah. God. Ooh, God. That's a great answer. Those are all really good answers. We have earthly treasures, like toys and money, uh, things. And then we have God, our heavenly treasure. Did you know that all our earthly treasures, they eventually fade away? The toys that you have today may not be here in 20 years. They may be broken. They may not be able to be fixed, right? So we like to go to the store and get new toys, right? I know Isaac's ready to go to the store. But, you know, in heaven... Everything that God has for us in heaven will never fade. It, Isaac, Isaac, are you the guardian of the money over here? All right. All right. Okay. All right. I know. I know. It's going to be okay. Did you know? I'm, I'm going to stop talking in just a second because y'all are getting tired of me. That in heaven, everything that God has for us will never fade, will never break. It will never have to be replaced. That God is going to be with us. It's going to be one amazing day forever with him. Let's, let's sing a song and then we'll pray. You going to help me, Isaac? I'm going to build up the kingdom. Y'all ready? Building up the kingdom, building up the kingdom, building up the kingdom of the Lord. Oh, brother, won't you help me? Sister, won't you help me? Building up the kingdom of the Lord. It's so high, you can't get over it. So low, you can't get under it. So wide, you can't get around it. Have to go through the door. Building up the kingdom, building up the kingdom, building up the kingdom of the Lord. Oh, brother, won't you help me? Sister, won't you help me? Building up the kingdom of the Lord. It's so high, you can't get over it. So low, can't get under it. So wide, can't get around it. Have to go through the door. Whew. Good job. Let's pray. Thank you, God, so much for your kingdom that will never end. Father, thank you for these these children. Thank you for their families. Pray that you would bless each and every one of them. Be with us now as we continue to worship you. May it be in truth and spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good job, guys. I serve a risen Savior, he's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. The time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. In all the world around me, I see his loving care. And though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy blast. The day of his appearing will come at last. 
He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, He lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know He lives. He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian, lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King, the hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. I know that my Redeemer lives and ever prays. I know eternal life he gives from sin and sorrow free. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know, I know eternal life he gives. I know. holy face may see when from this earth life freed I know, I know that my Redeemer lives I know, I know eternal life he gives I know a place prepared for me, a home, a house not made with hands, most wonderful to see. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives, I know, I know eternal life he gives, I know. This time we have our reading from God's Word. Psalms 127. Uh, Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guard stands watch in vain. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat, for he grants sleep to those he loves. Children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring, a reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior, and children born in one's youth, blessed is the man. Who quivers is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in court.
Will you pray with me? Father God, thank you so much for this moment of worship. Thank you for letting us be here with you, Father, and those who couldn't be here. Thank you for letting them worship you, Father, where they are. Father, thank you for these children. Father, thank you for their families. Thank you for the life you've given us. We are truly blessed. Father, we know that our Redeemer lives. He prays for me. He intercedes for us. Father, he's building a house for us for all eternity. Father, help us to slow down and help us to see you. Help us to keep our eyes on you and to keep seeking first your kingdom and your will above all. Father, be with those who are sick. Pray for healing. Pray that we can um, be the church you have called us to be and to, to love others, to reach out to others. Father, help us to shine your light that the community around us will know Christ and the power that they can have through Christ and the salvation that he gives. Father, please forgive us when we fail you. Help us to always come back to you, to repent, to turn back to you. Father, we need you. We can't live one day without you. Father, we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Low in the grave he lay, Jesus my Savior, waiting the coming day, Jesus my Lord. Up from the grave he arose, with the mighty triumph o'er his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with the saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Vainly they watch his bed, Jesus my Savior. For his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with the saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Death cannot keep his prey. Jesus, my Savior, ye tore the bars away, Jesus, my Lord. Up from the grave he arose, with the mighty triumph for his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain. And he lived forever with the saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Please help me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time, for the opportunity, Lord, to be here and remember all that you have done for us. We thank you, Lord, 
for Jesus Christ above all things. We thank you for his life here, for the life that he gave, which we see, Lord, in the bread, the bread of life which comes into us and makes us live, which helps us by making us a part of all that you are doing in the world. Help us, Lord, never to forget what we do now throughout our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's pray again. Heavenly Father, we thank you also for that blood shed for us, which covers us, which reconciles us, Lord, to you. Help us to remember that it flows through us. Never, Lord, to contain its blessings and its salvation but always to let them flow from us to all with whom we come in contact. In Jesus' name we thank you. Amen. Having freely received, let us now freely give. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that we have, for all that we are. We know it all comes from you. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to help us, encourage in us, cultivate in us always a giving, a cheerfully giving heart that knowledge, Lord, that the blessings that you give us are not to be selfishly hoarded, but always to be given freely and passed on. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's uh, stand together once again as we sing this song before Chris comes and preaches to us. Give me the Bible. Give me the Bible, star of gladness gleaming, to cheer the wanderer, lone and tempest-tossed. No storm can hide that radiant peace will be me, since Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Holy message shining, thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining, till night shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible when my heart is broken, when sin and grief have filled my soul with fear. Give me the precious words by Jesus spoken. Hold up face laughter, show my Savior near. 
Shining, thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Reset and promise, love and love combining, till night shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible, lamp of life immortal, hold up that splendor by the open grave. Show me the light from heaven's shining portal. Show me the glory gilding Jordan's way. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Reset and promise, law and love combining. Till night shall vanish in eternal day. Be seated, please. Chris, welcome home. Come preach the word, brother. Well, good morning. The question's been asked, where you been, preacher? I've been for a week in Berlin, New Mexico. It was wonderful with all of these folks. Now, out of those individuals, only a very small handful, I'm counting one, two, three, four, five. Five of those individuals, six, six counting the preacher. Six were, in, were members of the Church of Christ in Berlin, New Mexico. Twenty-three people were in attendance the Sunday before, the Sunday before we arrived, twenty-six the week before that, and we baptized into Christ twelve new babes in Christ, and we restored two wayward members. And so the church just about with their children and several young families were added. Well, the church just about doubled while we were there. So praise God is one of the most successful campaigns that uh, they've had for quite some time in gospel uh, sharing ministries. Ronnie there is baptizing Joe into, Joseph into Christ. And he also baptized Leroy, Leroy, Leroy into Christ. And here, um, Brian baptized uh, a, a husband here who baptized his own wife into Christ uh, following after we had that happen several times where husbands were baptized and then they baptized their own wives. Uh, it was a very exciting time. It was a great week, but you weren't there. I missed you very, very much. I am very glad to be home and don't intend to go anywhere else for quite a while. I'm thrilled to be home. The little boy once uh, was asked in Sunday school along with the rest of the class, little Leroy was never uh, at loss, a loss for words. And the teacher was asking, now don't you boys and girls, don't you all want to go to heaven? And Leroy piped up and said, why do you think I put a dollar in the basket for? <laughs> we want to go to heaven, don't we? We're excited about a place that is perfect in which all of the pollutions of this world have been removed. A place that was everything fellowship with God ought to be and will be. A place where we can't sin anymore, it appears. There is no more sin in that place. What a glorious place that's going to be. But you'll notice comparing and contrasting, this world is completely different from that world. There is a huge contrast, and yet between the Garden of Eden, there are great comparisons. To really understand a subject, you have to compare and contrast to tell how two different things are the same and very different. Jesus did that in Matthew, the fifth chapter, talking about eternal life. Jesus talked about not just one resurrection, but two of them. Take a look at Matthew chapter, excuse me, John chapter 5, beginning in verse 24. There the Son of God said, Most assuredly I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. Most assuredly, 
I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself and has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this. For the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. I can do nothing of myself. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will, but the will of my Father who sent me. Jesus here speaks of not one, but two different resurrections. He's emphasizing the fact that he has the power to forgive sins. Whenever they let the paralytic down by four, as we talked about earlier this year, you remember Jesus forgave the man's sins before he told him to take up his bed and walk. And he said, so that you can know that the Son of Man on earth has the power to forgive sins, he said, take up your bed and walk. Jesus talked about a first resurrection, a resurrection in which the individuals who hear live. First of all, notice the time. The time is coming and now is. Jesus had already begun his ministry of forgiveness, his ministry of salvation, but his ministry that would be culminating in the cross and in the church. But Jesus has already forgiven several people. He told the, one of the lepers who came back that your sins are forgiven. He, pro, he told him your faith has saved you. He told a number of individuals like that thief on the cross for a number of different circumstances that like the thief, today you'll be, in, you'll be with me in paradise or your sins are forgiven or this has saved you, your faith has saved you. Jesus forgave a lot of sins here on the earth. Just like he'd been forgiving sins all throughout the Old Testament through the Old Testament sacrifices. But Jesus here is talking about a very general time in which some people will hear and the people who hear will be resurrected and have a new life. He described this very well to Nicodemus. In John, the third chapter, we read about Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, coming to Jesus by night. There is no indication that Nicodemus, like the rest of the Pharisees, had ever been baptized into John. And Jesus told him in John chapter 3 and verse 3, you must be born again. Nicodemus asked, how can I enter... How can I be born again? He asked, can a man enter a second time in his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus, I'm convinced Jesus nails him. Jesus just rebukes him and tells him, you haven't been born of water. Except a man be born of water and the Spirit. He cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. John's baptism was still valid at that point. In fact, John, according to Mark, was preaching the baptism of remission of sins, of repentance for the remission of sins. And the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected for themselves the counsel of God, being not baptized of him. Luke chapter 7, verse 30. Nicodemus has got to be in that class. When he says, how do I be born again? Jesus says, you've got to be born again. You've got to be born of water and the Spirit. And yet the full meaning of that hadn't really come home of that first resurrection. We know about sin and death. We know that every single one of us have been separated from God by sin. Oh, that's in Isaiah chapter 59 verses 1 and 2. The, the Lord's hand is not short that he cannot save. His ear is not heavy that he cannot hear. But his sins have separated between you. And him. God won't save because of sin. And woe, all of us have sinned. For all have sinned and fall short 
of the glory of God, Romans chapter 3, verse 23. And that sin results in death, Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Adam and Eve were told, the day you eat of that fruit, you will surely die. God, through His grace, didn't physically kill them that day. He put animal skins on them, and I'm convinced that there began a time of where the patriarchs were be able, through sacrifice, to communicate with God, even though they didn't really start seeking after God till Seth was born, and mankind started coming, trying to come back to God. But they still died. There's something amazing about the presence of God. Remember Moses wanted to see God on Mount Horeb, on Mount Sinai? He's the one that the Bible actually says that he spoke with God face to face. But that's, that's a bit of a figure of speech. Because Moses is warned, no one can see me and live. And yet, in the Garden of Eden, God came down every day, it seems like. God came down in the cool of the evening and walked with them. I'm looking forward to heaven one of these days so I can be with God. But Adam and Eve died just as surely because of their sins that day spiritually as we do when we intentionally, and we all have, gone off and decided to do something God told us not to do. Or we failed to do something God told us to do. And we knew what we were doing. We decided to do it because God's word tells me all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23. I died. I've got to live. How am I going to do it? How can I take part in the first resurrection? You've got to hear the voice of the Son of Man. So let's listen to him. Jesus told us on the Mount of Mount as he is ready to ascend into heaven just outside Jerusalem, he told his disciples to go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. Let them hear the voice of the Son of Man. That's in Matthew chapter 28, beginning in verse 18. All authority, Jesus said, is given unto me in heaven and on earth. Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. Is that what you meant by the first resurrection? Is that what you meant, that you'll hear the voice of the Son of God? Well, maybe, because when Mark records it, Mark records it with these words. Jesus told them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth, and is baptized, shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be condemned. Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 16. Is that what Jesus meant? Let me run you through a little chain of scriptures that everyone needs to know. First of all, whenever I, if I'm lost, it'll be because I didn't listen to the Son of God and did not obey the gospel. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 9 says that Jesus will come in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and obey not the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If we don't obey the gospel, we're going to be lost. But I thought gospel was good news. How do I obey good news? I listen to the news every day and I don't obey it. I mean, if they say a hurricane's coming, I guess I get out of the way. I do what I can in response to the news, but news is not something obey. you obey, except you do. The gospel of Christ is good news, and that's what the word meant in Greek, good news. However, you on Gelion, a messenger was an angel, or on Gelion, and you is their word for good, so it's good news or a good message. But what good message is meant by the scriptures? The apostle Paul told us exactly what the gospel was in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning in verse 1. There, the apostle writes, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, 
which also receive and which also you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. So the gospel is what saves. Paul preached it to them. And that fits with what he said elsewhere. For he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. For the Jew first and also to the Greek. So if that's God's power, how do I obey it? Keep reading. For I delivered to you, first of all, that which also I received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Those are the three elements of the gospel message. All three are important. That Jesus died for my sins, as the Bible said he was going to, Isaiah Chapter 53 had promised that the Savior would suffer. Psalm 22 talked about his hands and his feet would be pierced. They'd look upon him who they pierced, that they would cast lots for his garment. The old t Jesus died according to the scriptures. But that's the first element in the good news, in only the first element. That Jesus died for me and in my place so that I don't have to go to hell eternally. But that's the first element. I never thought about the second element. I hear, allow me everywhere about Jesus' death, and I see crosses everywhere, but I very seldom see a grave. That he was buried. Jesus died on the cross, and in his death he shed his blood for us. For after he was dead, a Roman soldier came by to make sure he was dead and pierced his side with a spear and blood and water flowed abundantly to make sure you know he cannot possibly be alive. If he wasn't dead before, he's bled to death now. His blood was shed in his death, not his life. Unlike an Old Testament sacrifice that you cut the throat of the animal had you, if you had your head on it, Jesus died and then his blood was shed in sacrifice by a pagan. Amazing how the devil was trying to kill Jesus and destroy him and had a pagan make the sacrifice for our sins with his spear. What an amazing thing. But that second element is just as important. Joseph of Arimathea asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was surprised he died so quickly and and, and asked if he was really dead. And Joseph of Arimathea took the body and put it in his own tomb. Nicodemus came and put together and over 100 pounds of spices were put there. They did this so secretly that the ladies bring their spices on Sunday morning. That they want to complete the burial of Jesus. And they bring their spices when over 100 pounds has already been left with Jesus that they may know nothing about. For Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus were secret disciples. Jesus was buried in the earth Friday night, Saturday, and early Sunday, Jesus was resurrected. When they accused the Apostle Paul of preaching a gospel of grace and virtually grace alone, and some were accusing him of saying, hey, uh, let's all sin. God is great because he forgives us, and the more he forgives us, the greater he is. Look how great he is, how much he's able to forgive through Jesus' blood. So what do you say? Shall we continue in sin that grace may increase? What's the answer? It's the first resurrection. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may increase? God forbid. How shall we who died to sin live any longer therein. We were buried, therefore, with him through baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also ought to walk in newness of life. For if we become united with him, planted with him, some translations say, united with him in the likeness of his death, so shall we also be in the likeness of his resurrection. That's where we get the benefits of the death of Christ. 
Whenever Paul was, set, Paul was accused of preaching free grace, and some try to take the rest of the book of Romans and say, all you got to do is what it says over here in chapter 10. Paul was able to point back and say, no, no, no. I'm not preaching grace alone, through faith alone. It's grace through faith, but it's not just anything you want, because remember, we all died with him. Every one of us was buried with Christ in baptism. And there we took part in the death, burial in water, and the resurrection rising into new life. That's the first resurrection. It's for those who hear. Unfortunately, Jesus didn't just talk about one resurrection. He talked about two. Jesus talked about it over and over. Oh, they knew all about it. I'm all done with that anyway. Uh, Jesus, he knew all about it. They knew all about it during Jesus' lifetime. Remember when they were there at the tomb with Lazarus and Jesus says he's going to live again? I knew somebody would get up and he's going to help me. Thank you. And whenever, they, whenever Lazarus is in the tomb, he asks Martha, do you believe he's going to live again? Said, yes, I know he'll live again at the resurrection. Jesus had been teaching about this general resurrection of the dead all throughout his ministry. He talked about it in Matthew the 13th chapter when he talked about the parable of the tares. How at the end of the world the angels would come along and sever the wicked from among the righteous. He talked about the parable in Matthew chapter 13 of the dragnet. How the angels would come along like fishermen with a dragnet and sit on the shore and separate the good fish from the bad fish. In Matthew chapter 25, Jesus talked about a judgment scene that was to come in which we'd be judged the basis of, upon how we treated one another, especially his children. I was hungry and you fed me. I was naked, you clothed me, I was in prison and you visited me. Or the opposite. Oh, that's scary stuff. There is a resurrection coming in which all, all who are in the grave will hear his voice. Nobody will miss it. This time, all who hear will live. We submit to Christ in faith in trust, in baptism, in repentance, in confession of his name before others. And we're risen from those waters to walk a new life. We've got to keep walking it, by the way. Don't forget, as we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all unrighteousness. 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. We've got to keep walking. But unless you're a part of that first resurrection, you don't want any part in the second. And yet we're going to have part in the second resurrection, every single one of us. I hope you're looking forward to the second resurrection. I am. I can hardly wait to see my father again and my mother. And forgive me, Glenda, I'm looking forward to seeing Penny and Rich. I am looking forward to that resurrection and living forever with God. But some can't look forward to it. The contrast is drawn starkly in Revelation chapter 14. In Revelation chapter 14, beginning in verse 9, we read about a place, one place we want to go, and one place we don't. The third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast and anyone and his image and receives his mark on, on his forehead or on his hand, he shall, himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever. They have no rest day or night. Those who worship the beast and his image. And those who receive the mark of his name. That's half the story. Everyone will live forever. Some won't like where they're at. 
However, keep reading. There is a way by taking part in the first resurrection to be in this part of the resurrection. Here's the patience of the saint. saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Verse 13 now. I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Write, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works follow after them. Jesus is here to bless us and reward us. Which shall it be? Punishment or reward? The second resurrection has everything to do with the first resurrection. you got to be alive when you die. That's a funny one. But you've got to be alive when Jesus comes back. Because if we're dead in our trespasses and sins, we'll live an eternal, ongoing death in a devil's hell. Never meant for you. God made that for Satan and for his minions. Not for you. Won't you accept the resurrection that Jesus has for you right now. A resurrection from an old life of sin. God's help. Once you believe that Jesus is the Christ, except you believe that I am he, you'll die in your sins, John 8, 24. And you repent, turn from sin, Luke chapter 13, verse 3 and 5. Except you repent, you'll all likewise perish. And when we make that good confession of faith, in Christ and are buried with Christ in baptism. God's here to help. We start walking that new walk by being resurrected in this life and with God on our side, walking in the light. First resurrection. Have you taken part? It begins at baptism. Have you been buried with Christ in baptism for the forgiveness of your sins? If not, why not? I don't understand. I kind of understand. I held on the, onto the pews for years before I accepted what I obeyed Christ and obeyed the gospel till somebody loved me enough to say, why haven't you? I love you. I care about you. I know of a number of us who have never submitted to Christ in baptism. Let me ask you, why not? Please, won't you, won't you accept the free gift that God has for you? Take part in the first resurrection so that, that second resurrection will be a resurrection for you of joy. If you're subject to Christ's invitation, won't you please come as we stand and as we sing? to lead us in our shepherd's prayer this morning. Please stay and enjoy our fellowship today. Plenty of food. If you didn't bring any, that's okay. There'll be enough. Always enough. Mike, come lead us as we pray. Amen. Father, we ask your blessings. We are needy. But we know that you've blessed us with your son and the truth that Chris has presented this morning concerning the change that we can make to truly become 
yours. Father, I'm not worthy. It's only through your grace that any of us can become your child. Your child following your son, being truly an heir of being saved from what we've done and for what we do. Guide us in how to change that. That our days are filled with less selfish choices. That our days are filled with more shared of your love to others who don't even know you. Oh, they think they do. But Father, help us to guide them to know more. Whether it be with the actions that we have every day, how we react to those who are being influenced so hard by evil. And Father, there's times that we're participants and we don't want to be. We've got a few struggles. Some of us are sick. I know Kenneth Garner's got surgery this next week for skin cancer. I know there's, we've got quite a list. Help us overcome them, to know your will in our lives. Help us to take today and be yours and be yours every day after until there are no more days and we can just live in that endless day. For our time together, help us strengthen each other. For the food, thank you. You gave us everything. It's up to us to accept it and say thank you to you. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen.